Hello everyone, Pally Tum here. Welcome back to Diablo 4. In today's video, we are back on the Barbarian. Some of you may remember that earlier in the beta life cycle, I released a video trying to help others who felt their Barbarians were too squishy. We went over a build that was very, very tanky in hopes of just surviving long enough that we might be able to build something else one day. Well, I am here in this dungeon to fight as many enemies as possible to show you some of the capabilities of Whirlwind. Yes, we finally got it off the ground. And as you can see, once we start spinning, we start winning pretty soon after. I'm trying to bring these two elites together. If I am Whirlwinding multiple elites, basically I can spin for an eternity. The longer I spin, the more damage I do. I'm radiating tornadoes off in every direction. I'm radiating fire damage. I'm getting a bunch of shields just for being near elites. The list of synergies in this setup is very long. And the cool thing is, is like I captured every single item drop that we got to make this happen almost within a one hour time span. And it was recorded without commentary because I was watching a movie last night. So I'm gonna be able to edit the journey of bringing all this together in a nice tidy little package. And I, I hope I can do that soon. But this has been the most fun I have had on any character. Yes, even my rogue who I was really touting as the winner of the beta. Well, once I got Whirlwind unlocked, nothing really compares. This is just so crazy good. There is some awkward downtime. Like right now, I need to just generate fury. Really, you could argue that I probably spent too long generating fury there. Once, you, if you're fighting an elite, once you get up to enough to start spinning, that's all you need. You'll be able to continue spinning. And fighting double elites like this is literally best case scenario for what we are trying to do. It is worth mentioning as well that these Goatmen are some of the most deadly enemies in the game. They have a really strong overhead, like, chunker of an attack. They, they raise their weapon over their head with two hands and just slam it down and crack your skull in half. It is a massive amount of damage. But one of our synergies with Whirlwind is actually interrupting that attack and making us considerably safer right next to one of the most deadly enemies in the game. Uh, I'm gonna go over my talents, then we'll take a look at a lot of our legendaries to bring this all together as well. I have one point in Frenzy. This is so I can get to the damage reduction part of Frenzy. It does help out for when you're not able to spin. That damage reduction is huge, and it just takes a few swings to really get your Fury up enough that you can start to cast Whirlwind, which is our main core skill. We have six levels in this, so one of our pieces of gear is improving Whirlwind beyond what is normally possible. We also have Enhance Whirlwind, gain one Fury each time Whirlwind deals direct damage to an enemy, three Fury against Elites. So if we're fighting two Elites together, that's six Fury every time we deal damage, which is more than enough to actually fuel the Whirlwind to continue. And then while using a slashing weapon, Whirlwind also affects 20% of its base damage as bleed. This is important to pay attention to. Um, Barbarian does have a thing where if you press S, sorry, I couldn't remember the key, you can actually change the weapon you are using with your abilities by pressing that middle mouse button. You can see down at the bottom, it's actually, I'm able to use any of my combinations of weapons. So I do have a slashing weapon ready for it. That means every time we spin, we're dealing bleed damage as well. Then over at the defensive skills, I did pick up both Iron Skin as well as Rally and Cry. Iron Skin you wanna hold on to until your health is, you know, around half. That's when you're gonna get the biggest benefit. The lower your health is, the better the benefit. Uh, it's going to absorb more because of our talent specializations, but then it's also going to heal me for 10% of the barrier's original amount. So if I use this when I'm low on HP, it'll just passively heal me back up. And it's a pretty short cooldown. We can use it relatively often. Rally and Cry is going to increase my movement speed. It's also going to increase my resource generation. The idea with this was to use it in conjunction with the resource generation 
from the whirlwind. Uh, I was hoping that it would help me just maintain the whirlwind even more once I actually started spinning. It's gonna make us unstoppable at the same time as well as give us a fortify effect, making us a bit tankier to help us mitigate damage. I then have one point in War Cry. This is giving us a pretty hefty damage dealt increase for not only myself, but any allies that would be nearby. The really important thing about this though, is when we hit that button, it's going to grant us berserking for four seconds. We have several legendaries that combo perfectly with berserking, and we have multiple ways of forcing our barbarian to enter that berserking state. Lastly, Warcry grants you 28% of your base life as fortify, yet another way of improving our fortify. I do then have three points in swiftness just so I can maintain my spin on top of enemies a bit easier. Looks like I also put a point into pit fighter here, giving us an increase to uh, in damage to close enemies. But the creme de la creme, the final points I spent in my tree and really what gives us a huge increase to our lethality is Wrath of the Berserker. Yes, we get a free one earlier in the talent tree, but this is one on command. For the next 10 seconds, dealing direct damage with basic skills grants Berserking for five seconds. So you only need to attack once in the middle to pretty much have the buff for the entire duration. While Wrath of the Berserker is active, gain 20% increased movement speed and fury generation, as well as the fury you spend increases Berserking's damage bonus by 25%. This is our big damage cooldown. We just yell and get mad and cleave through our enemies. Now, I do have quite a few legendaries here on my Barbarian. Some of them are very good for our build. Some of them are just legendaries because they're legendaries. In fact, my rings are overriding each other, I believe. Yes, indeed, they are. <laughs> so first up, I have my gloves. This causes an extra friend, an ancient, to join me in battle if I hit with Whirlwind. Upheaval and Leap have significantly you know, less uptime. Whirlwind, you're spending all the time. You're going to be hitting enemies, 44% chance every time I swing. We're basically summoning in a guy to help us cleave stuff down every five seconds. I don't know for sure, but it does seem to me like Whirlwind is the best way to spawn this guy, because look how easy that was. If I was using Leap, that's a 15 second cooldown for a 44% chance to spawn that dude. Like if I if I just start spinning again, we'll get another one, like off cooldown. He's here all the time. And when he does show up, it is a lot of damage as well. It's very noticeable when that Ancient appears. Then I have Whirlwind leaves behind Dust Devils that deal 184 damage to surrounding enemies. This is on a weapon I'm not even using to Whirlwind. This is my bludgeoning weapon that we have equipped on the left side. But I still get the legendary effect from the item. And this is the Dust Devil that it spawns. Diablo 3 had Dust Devils too, and they were so lame in comparison. They were just a tiny little tornado that barely, I don't even think it moved. They just spawned behind you. These things are big, imposing. They clear enemies that you can't reach and allow you to really increase your damage output for nothing. You're already spinning. On my single-handed axe, Whirlwind's critical strike chance is increased by 8% for each second that it is channeled up to 32%. We have all these bonuses to fury generation. This allows us to also increase our damage the longer we spin. It is so good. We have such a good synergy with it. Now, this is the other half of the puzzle. While berserking, you deal fire damage around you. Remember, we have two different ways of applying berserking. So you can see this fire damage just rolling off of me, and it's about the same width as my whirlwind. So if I have both of these things rolling, which is very easy to do, it's just increasing the damage being done around me. 
If we look at our next item, whenever you deal direct damage while berserking, inflict 60% of the damage dealt as additional bleed damage over five seconds. So while Wrath of the Berserker is up and we're whirlwinding, we're also bleeding every target that we come into contact with. Not only with this effect, but with this effect as well, which stacks up a ton of bleeds very, very quickly. Last but not least, Whirlwind periodically pulls in enemies to you. This was the stagger effect I was talking about. This is how we were interrupting those goat men so easily and making ourselves safer. It just pulls them in a little bit. It's just a little vacuum effect, but it's enough to literally crowd control some of the biggest threats out there. Now, the other legendaries I have, killing an enemy with a core skill refunds 13% of its base fury costs. Can only happen once per skill cast. This is useless to us because our our spender is a channel, so we're gonna be holding it for a long time, not spamming out individual casts. I can see this being a very good ring with a lot of other barbarian skills though. And then this one is actually pretty nice. Critical strikes grant 10% movement speed for one second, up to six seconds if we continue to get critical strikes. Because we have that ramping crit chance, uh, it just means that we're going to be moving around faster. Oh, and I shouldn't discredit this one either. Uh, damaging an elite grants you a barrier absorbing 315 damage. It happens every 30 seconds. Uh, it, basically, if you encounter elite, you get an extra iron skin, which is very, very nice for our survivability. Speaking of survivability, I actually just found these pair of pants, which I like quite a lot. Unfortunately, that legendary we were just talking about is also... A pair of pants but we should be able to craft that legendary effect onto these new trousers pretty easy because i believe this is just a dungeon thing yes indeed so i got this this recipe from just clearing a dungeon and now i can put it on any pair of pants that i want it's super easy to craft once you find it and i have a sneaking suspicion that the willpower on this item or you know the willpower stat in general might be kind of the missing link i need to be able to spend all of the time increases our resource regeneration by 7.1 percent now i think that applies to my resource generation from my abilities while spinning but it may just apply to our Not basic generator on our left click I actually just found another legendary that I think would have a, a really good synergy yet again. Attacking enemies with a basic skill, so that would be our frenzy, increases the damage of your next core skill by 10% up to 50%. So if you attack five times, your right click is a channel. So I'm pretty sure you would be increasing the damage of your whirlwind by 50% for as long as you could channel it. Our boss survivability is pretty good now, actually, all things considered. Keep in mind that this dungeon does have some incredible elite density, but the boss at the end is basically just a hard elite. We're not fighting any of those bosses that have like the triangles in their health bar because they're spawning potions at different intervals. And here he comes now. I'm just gonna make sure that we generate a little bit first. Wrath of the Berserker. And that's all it takes. That was his big overhead slam there that we interrupted. Bro. Whirlwind Barbarian is good. And this is only level 25. It's only gonna get better, right? I mean, it has to only get better. Keep in mind that Barbarian does not have access to their class quest yet. So there may be additional things hidden in here that allow us to pop off even more. But that's gonna do it for today's video, boys. I hope you enjoyed it. A whirlwind is incredible. I cannot believe how lucky I got with all of these drops back to back to back. I'm gonna edit that little journey together. Uh, it shows off some pretty cool game mechanics as well at the same time. I think it should be pretty compelling. I have two and a half hours left to play and I'm gonna get the fullest out of it. I'll see you guys again very soon.